Mixed Reality with Live. What is it and how do you do it? This is an updated video from the original one. Setup is basically the same, but UI has changed a little and I'm not as awkward at making YouTube videos now compared to then. Nope, still really awkward. We're going to be going over PC VR capture specifically, or basically if you're planning on using Live with games in your Steam library, regardless if you're using Quest or a different headset. If you want to use Live with Quest library games, you'll want to check out this video instead, although you may get some good tips on green screen and lighting from this one regardless. Note that for mixed reality, not all games are supported, but quite a few are. You can check out the full supported game list over at bit.ly slash livesteamvr, but I'll also include this link in the description below for convenience. Mixed Reality uses a real camera, like a webcam or a DSLR, to put you inside of the game. For best quality, you're going to want an actual green screen, but for a quick try, you can use the Segmentive Auto Background Removal tool built straight into Live. Let me give you a quick rundown on what you're going to need ahead of time. First, kind of duh, but you're going to need a computer. Since we'll be using games from your Steam library, not only are you going to want a computer that can handle VR, but basically handle it twice, since that's essentially what happens when you have the Live app output open. For reference, I've been running a 2070 with a Ryzen 7 and 32 gigabytes of RAM, and so far have had no issues both running both VR and Live at the same time. For physical equipment, you'll need a VR headset, of course, and its controllers. I'm using a Valve Index, but I've also successfully done this with the original HTC Vive and a Quest 2. You'll need a camera, one that can plug into your computer, and preferably something with a wide field of view or wide angle. I started off with the Logitech C920, which worked, but it wasn't wide enough for my purposes. As I advanced, I eventually got an Avermedia Livestreamer cam that has a 95 degree field of view, then eventually settling on the Canon M50 with a wide angle lens attachment. Work your way up to these upgrades slowly. Don't shell out a ton of money for something that you may not end up liking or using in the long run. Now for your green screen. Like I mentioned in the beginning, while there is an auto background removal feature in Live you can play with at first, the ideal looking setup is going to need a green screen. There are different ways that you can hang this. Some people have nailed or used thumbtacks to stick fabric to the wall, but if you don't want to do any damage or put in any holes on your walls, I recommend buying just a backdrop stand. While looking for a green screen, make sure you get one that's wider than your arm span and long enough that you can stand on it if you want to get full body in. Take into consideration the fact that you will also be moving and swinging your arms around while in VR. If you are able, and if you really get into mixed reality, the easiest setup will be to just paint your walls green like I did. I'll add the paint code here in case anyone wants the same shade, but major props to Bo and Audi for sharing their shade code with me. For your flooring, you can also use puzzle piece floor mats to stand on instead keeping in mind that depending on your setup, these may slip around. The ones I ordered ended up a little more blue than I'd like, but they still key out just fine. I actually have three different types of kit links that I'll post in the description below for recommendations on equipment that you can buy for beginner, intermediate, and advanced setups. Feel free to mix and match based on your needs. Now you may have a pretty great green screen setup, but you'll need good even lighting to make sure that you can actually key yourself out cleanly and properly. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. The first method and the cheapest which I started out with was by getting those clamp light mounts that you can get at any hardware store. I added daytime bulbs and had about four of them that I mounted to whatever was nearby. Chairs, tripods, etc. Later on I upgraded to LED panel lights which I love because they're nice and bright and adjustable, but I've seen others install tube lights on the ceiling as well for some added coverage. Each light should be the same distance away and at the same angle as this is the best way to ensure an even lighting across. At minimum, you'll want two lights depending on the quality and brightness, but four is ideal. You also don't want to be standing too close to the backdrop as that may create harsher shadows and may become part of an accident if you start swinging wildly while in VR. Now that I've gone over the physical setup, let's show you how to put it all together using the actual Live software. Make sure that you also have your broadcasting or recording software ready to go, something like OBS or Streamlabs OBS, as Live does not act as a recorder itself, but more as a source that you would add into a recording software. Think of it more like a game that you need to capture. Make sure that you also have Steam VR installed because you can't play, let alone record, any VR games if you don't have it running. First off, if you're brand new to Live, you'll have to make an account. It takes five seconds to create if you link one of your social accounts. Otherwise, if you don't want to, that's okay too. You'll just have a watermark that you won't be able to toggle off. For a sanity check, go to About, then under Live Steam VR Driver. If the Install button is green, make sure you click it to install it. 
With Live Up and Running under PC VR Tools, we're going to click Mixed Reality Capture, then the Start Capture button. First go to the Camera tab and click the Add Camera button. Select your camera type, which in most cases will be Video Camera, then your specific device along with your preferred resolution. If you don't see your camera appear in the Live Output window by now, it might be being used in another program like your broadcasting software. Unless you're using the Live plugin, cameras can only be used in one program at a time. The Auto Background Removal toggle will either be under your camera settings as Segmentive Key or under Keying as AI Keying, depending on when you're watching this video and what branch you're on. Next, you'll need to calibrate so that your controllers line up to the in-game hands or controllers. At this point, if you don't already have Steam VR running, go ahead and do that now. Under the Calibration section, click Begin Calibration, then From Headset. In your headset, click the Calibrate button and you'll see a red X appear. You'll need to bring your controllers over these three red X's and press the trigger once or twice over them. The first trigger click will be touching your camera's lens, and the next two will be further back to the left and to the right. Make sure you go as far back into your space as possible when doing the left and right clicks. After calibration, you can still do some fine-tuning if you find that the positions are a bit off. Simply move the position sliders until the virtual controller is pretty accurately superimposed on top of your real controller. Head back over to the Latency tab and shake your controllers around a bit to see if you need to add some latency to them so that it matches better. Set your latency and then remember this number. On your broadcasting software, go to the Advanced Settings on your desktop and microphone audio sources, and under Sync Offset, add the latency number here. This will make sure that your audio will always match up to the video. If your latency is set really high, you might notice a delay in post, but this will fix that for you. Next, let's key out your background. If you decided to just give things a quick try with the segmented toggle, make sure you have bright, even lighting on yourself, and the less messy your background is, the easier it'll be able to remove you from your background. Still, you will get the best results using an actual green screen. You can find the keying settings under Camera, then Camera Settings. You can change the color to key out if you'd like, although most commonly it will be green. If you want to customize it further, you can actually grab the eyedropper tool and drop it over the most common green shade in your room. Adjust the threshold and smoothness as needed until you get the cleanest results. Try to primarily use threshold to key yourself out, adding smoothness only if necessary. To make this easier on yourself, unless you have someone to stand in for you, I typically place a stool or piece of furniture where I'll be standing to help key myself out better. When I think I'm close, I'll double check in headset while turning and doing various poses to make sure that things look good. If there are parts of your room that you don't want to appear in the frame, you can use the crop function to either cut off the top and bottom or the left and right. If you plan on leaving your camera stationary in pretty much the same place, you can create a mask to block out only the parts that you want. That's over in the Advanced tab, and I'll go over that more in a future video. Once you're done with your adjustments, make sure to hit that big Save button in the bottom. Now let's open the game in question so we can capture it. Head over to the Capture tab. Make sure that the game you want to capture is installed, and under the Auto tab drop-down list, select it, then click Sync and Launch. Switching over to the Live Output window, you should now see yourself inside your game. Keep in mind that not all games have Live support, but quite a few do. You can find an up-to-date list at bit.ly slash livesteamvr, but again, I'll also include this link in the description below. Here's a super neat bonus trick. Although it's in a weird spot, once your game is running, if you head over to the Manual tab, experiment with some of the fake lighting effects, as these will help you blend into the game you're playing much better, taking in-game colors and bouncing them onto you. If you want to see a preview of what your stream or recording sees, you can enable the viewfinder so that you can see yourself in your headset. Assuming you've already calibrated your controllers, the viewfinder will appear directly where your camera is so that you can make eye contact with your audience better. The inactive settings affect how the viewfinder looks when you are not directly facing your camera, and the active window means you are adjusting the settings for when you are directly facing or looking at the camera. I personally prefer to make the inactive window a little smaller with lower opacity and have the active window to be a bit larger and less see-through, but the settings are up to you. You may want to change how zoomed in or out you are relative to the VR space you're in. You can do this in Live by using the FOV override, however, you're going to get the best quality by getting as close as you can with your actual camera or camera zoom before touching the override settings. The Output tab allows you to change the resolution of the Live output window, the frames per second, and what monitor it's on, as well as its ability to lock its position to a specific monitor if needed. Now that we're looking good, let's add you to a broadcasting software so we can actually record or stream like this. 
Add a game capture source, choose a specific window, and select the live output as your window. Again, make sure that under your mixer you go to the advanced settings and add that latency that we mentioned earlier. You may find that based on your space, you might need to change the direction in which you are facing in order to get better angles. For this, I highly recommend the tool OVR Advanced Settings as it is a staple for any mixed reality creator. I've done a video in the past covering some of OVR Advanced Settings features, but in this space, we're specifically going to be going over Play Space Rotation, which is located in the Offsets menu. Simply download OVR Advanced Settings on Steam for free. You may have to restart Steam VR, but it'll basically appear on your dashboard like this. You can use the Space Offset section to change the center of your play space, as well as rotate your front to be exactly where you want it to be, making sure that you get the perfect angles. I also recommend checking out the Space Fix tab to quickly fix the center of your play space. You just need to put your controller on the floor where the center will be, then click Recenter Space. You may have to go back into the Space Offsets page to rotate your front to be where you want, but now at least everything will be nice and realigned. Live has so many other features like Streamer Kit, Avatars, First Person Stabilizer, which I've probably covered several of these in other videos in the past, so make sure you check those out as well. Consider this more of an intro guide. In future videos, I might go into more advanced things such as masking, LUTs, and tracked cameras. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps the channel out greatly. As always, keep on creating and never lose that drive to improve. I'll see you on the next one.